Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Podcast. I have returned. I am Jason. It's good to have you back, Jason. And I am John. And we are here to talk about UNO's exciting first series of 2023 against the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs, one of our conference foes. On the last podcast with Bridget and Jolene, uh, we talked uh, quite a bit about this series and uh, about their struggles, but you never know what's going to happen in the second half of conference play. Uh, uh, A lot of teams that have struggled in the first half can get things going, but uh, but this turned out to be a good weekend for you and and oh, and on Friday night, Ty Mueller gets things started with assists to Joe LeMay and Nolan Sullivan. And I was glad to see LeMay back in the lineup. He had gotten injured in the Western Michigan series. And I think UNO really missed uh, his puck handling ability. Uh, it was great to have him back in the game, Jason. He does make a difference with that ability to move the puck. We didn't get hemmed into our own zone as much as we were with them out. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's why you go out and recruit puck moving defensemen is because you know that they're your relief valve. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree. It was, it was really good to have him back and especially in a series like this, you know, as much of the struggles that you guys talked about last week on the podcast uh, with Duluth and stuff, one, they've been known to be a second half team when they play NCHC, they know this is their, their time to shine. And so they've had, Poor, I say poor seasons, but they've had seasons where they haven't met expectations in the past. And then they hit this, this second half play and, and they look like a dominant team um, on road to a conference championship or a national championship. So, so we know that they can be there too. And, you know, even with their struggles, they're a very evenly matched team for us. There's, they rely heavily on, you know, a handful of players. Uh, they've got quite a bit of untested uh, performance in, the, in their lineup. And so I was really looking forward to uh, to this series just to see how we stack up against a team that is very similar. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, and it was great to get that goal by Mueller to start things off. Uh, uh, he's been that kind of guy in uh, recent weeks and in recent games. And so UNO gets out of the first period up one to nothing, a good position for them to be in, but you never know going into the second period and the third period, what's going to happen for UNO, but UNO goes up two to nothing. Matt Miller with an assist from Jack Randall. Uh, it was, it's kind of a, 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 a nifty little goal he got. Um, it was a shorthanded goal and uh, Matt Miller pickpocketed the Duluth player in the, in the UNO defensive zone. The puck ended up going to Randall. They both went down the ice Miller gets the goal to put UNO up two to nothing. It was a good position for UNO to be in at that point. Were you thinking UNO's got this, Jason, or were you thinking that uh, the Bulldogs could come back? Two goals wasn't, uh, it wasn't putting it out of reach by any stretch of the imagination, especially being early in the second and having plenty of hockey to play. The one thing that was encouraging was, you know, in these tight matchups, when you're playing a, a level team, a team that's on the same level as you, that's a tight matchup like that. You know that your special teams play has to be, you know, on point. I'm sure that that Gabnet was preaching to the guys, you know, power play, penalty kill. So to not only have your your penalty kill being effective in preventing uh, Duluth from scoring a goal, but to get your first goal on the power play, to get a shorthanded goal and capitalize on that, um, you know, you really felt like UNO was in a in a good position there. And, you know, they were not, well, they weren't dominating. They had some sustained zone time, which is something we're not used to. Uh, so it was nice to see them with the lead, you know, fairly comfortable coming out of the second and going into the third, but still in a position where they know they had to, they had to be sharp. They had to play their game. Otherwise this game was going to get away from them. And it, it kind of does, uh, you know, Duluth scores uh, like five minutes apart before the the half of the third period there. And so for that last half of the game, we were skating on a level uh, playing field again with them. So the nerves on this team, I'm sure were fairly high. Yeah, I completely agree. I know my nerves were fairly high. I'm thinking, I don't want to see this game go to overtime, but, uh, but the veteran, the veteran transfer player who had a really nice season for UNO, 
Jake Pavanka in the uh, final seven minutes of the third period gets the goal to put UNO up three to two. Uh, Ray Fust and Tyler Weiss had assists on that play. I know your wife said uh, during the game on Saturday night, she's been pretty impressed with that line, Jason. She made a point to tell me how much she liked that line and uh, pointed out all game how much I disagreed with that. So, you know, it's going well. Uh, you know, there's there's chemistry there, which is nice. It's, you know, it's on paper. It's not one that you look at. We've talked about this on the podcast before. You know, Weiss is... Weiss is a setup artist. That's that's where he excels. That's the role you want him into. And if you're looking for him to be your outlet, if you're looking for him to be, you know, your point, your goal scorer on, at, you know, at any point, like I just think you're putting him in a position where he's outside of what what you can expect him to do, right? And when I look at that, like between Fust and Pavanka, I'm just like, who's like who's the sniper that he's going to give it to? Who is the guy that is going to find open ice and Weiss is going to give him a pass and they're going to be able to bury it nine times out of 10 up until this point. Like I, we haven't seen that from either of those guys. It was great to see this Duluth for them to break out. And, and especially Foss, like he, he had a great, great series. Uh, Pavanka was solid. He's winning faceoffs, which is big for that line because if you can get Weiss the puck off the draw in the zone, you're, you're going to give yourself a better opportunity to find the back of the net. And so a lot of those things were coming together. Now, the question for this is, this is a fairly new line. Can they keep doing it? Or is this that like one gun? We just, you know, the matchup was right. The, the game was right. The guys were just feeling well. So, you know, we'll see. I know uh, Pavanka and Weiss have had time playing in juniors together. So that chemistry already exists for them. So if Foss comes in and can be that that extra guy in there that can be reliable and be an option for Weiss, that that line could be dangerous in the future. And I'd be happy to be wrong if it, if it does work out that way. You know, and I would say credit, and we don't talk about him a lot, but Mike Gavinette mentions him a lot in the press coverage of this team, uh, is associate head coach Dave Noel Bernier, you know, one of the original UNO Mavericks. He was an assistant with the Grand Rapids Griffins and the Detroit Red Wings. He's really good at skill development and personnel development. And I uh, I have a feeling that uh, he was uh, responsible for this combination. You don't know if it's going to be a one-note piano or if this line's going to stick the rest of the way. Tyler seems to be like a like a Swiss Army knife that you can use in all kinds of situations. So UNO goes on to win the game uh, three to two. One interesting note is that UNO was wearing the gray jerseys on Friday, um, which they don't normally do. Normally, that's the uh, Saturday night jersey at home. So uh, so, yeah, a good result for UNO. And then we head into Saturday. And at that point, I don't know what's going to happen, because when you have a young team, uh, that's still developing, still finding its way. You don't know if they'll look at the series and be like, "Hey, we got a, we got a good win on Friday against uh, Duluth. Let's uh, let off the gas a little bit." But uh, UNO did not let off the gas, and uh, Ray Fust, two seventeen in the first period on Saturday night, he gets the goal to get things started. Jason, and then a couple minutes later, Pavanka uh, gets the goal to put UNO up. Two to nothing with assists to Weiss and Mancini. Uh, kind of a, a similar scenario to uh, Friday night. What were you What were you thinking at that point, Jason? What did you think about UNO's chances uh, in the game and of getting the sweep early on in that first period? Like you, I thought the concern going in was how were they going to respond after? You know, you're probably going to this weekend thinking that you know we're good with a split, and uh, sometimes the guys try to do a little bit too much. And then we did get a little bit. There were some, there were some fancy passes we were trying there in the first that we're not, uh, we're not connecting, you know, at all. Um, there was some frustration with the guys, with some penalty calls that didn't go our way. It was again, one of those things, like it's great to be up two to one at that, at the end of the first, uh, Duluth gets one back about midway through the first. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're, you're glad you're up going in, but it's like, you know, this is still a part of the pun, the dog fight coming in and uh, into the last half of that game. And so it felt good, but I was cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I was cautiously optimistic as well. And uh, UNO held that two to one lead for a long time when it's one goal 
you never know what's going to happen. A, a weird bounce, uh, a turnover, something like that can change the course of the game. But I'll tell you what, Jason, in that third period, specifically the last three minutes of that <laughs> third period, the floodgates opened and uh, the scoring opened up. And it started with uh, it started with Jacob Slipex goal at the 1728 mark in that third period it was a breakaway goal uh it was a fantastic goal to watch uh really got the team pumped up really got the crowd pumped up uh and then boom 11 seconds later johnny tyconic gets the empty net goal he shot that thing from uno's defensive zone uh, after nolan sullivan won the uh won the face up on that so at that point uno's up four to one in this game but they weren't done yet Slipek gets a goal uh with assists from uh roll wagon and uh davis pennington and uno's uh scoring for the night was capped by uh ray fust who had a uh, a nifty goal down low uh, that was set up from a pass from nolan sullivan so uno ends up winning that game six to one and uh the biggest news though is the fact that jacob zab uh, our third string goaltender, none of us thought we were ever going to get to see come in in game action. He has his he has his his Rudy Rudiger moment. Rudy, who was a walk on for the Notre Dame football team, didn't think he was ever going to get to play, gets in closing seconds of a game against Georgia Tech. Jason, how did you feel about Zab getting in that game? Because the crowd the crowd was just uh, really excited to see a guy who works so hard and uh, doesn't get a lot of playing time get in there on Saturday night. I think like everyone, you know, you were just so happy for the kid because you know how much he's put in and how much he's devoted to this team. And I think it speaks a lot to the hockey community as a whole and this Omaha team and this Omaha fan base, how much we support the guys even if they're not the all-star talent. Uh, it, we talked, we've talked before just in passing and stuff that's not really related you know, to hockey and stuff, but it's amazing how the Omaha area supports kind of these obscure sports and stuff. I mean, they've got sellout crowds at a swim meet. Uh, they've packed Baxter Arena, well, packed. I mean, they had a lot of people at Baxter Arena for curling, which no one ever goes to curling trials. And I remember the first time they were here and the, the athletes were saying like, it's usually mom and dad and, and family that we forced to come out here. Like it's never, there's never people here cheering for us. And you know, this, this community will really get behind, behind guys. And I think they get behind guys like Zab more than they get behind those, you know, five-star recruit kinds of, of players. And so it was just, you felt really good for the kid that he was able to get kind of his moment in the spotlight. And uh, I was super relieved when he made the save because I was like, oh God, don't let him let the only shot he sees go in. That would just be, oh, such a, such a downer for so, something that should have been just such a great, uh, great thing. But luckily uh, he got that paddle down, made a save. And uh, I mentioned, I, I heard him say something in the, in the post game about, how relieved he was that he, he made his save. And I think the coach said something about him being uh, the first goaltender to have a, a hundred percent save percentage. So that was, it was great to see for the kid. Uh, currently a hundred save percentage. I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, I just want to thank every one of you guys. You guys mean the world to me, and it's the best thing in the world coming to drink every day with you guys. And I love each and every one of you guys. So this puts UNO in a really good position in the conference race. For those who haven't been paying attention to the NCHC race, it's kind of crazy this season, Jason. Obviously, you've got Denver and St. Cloud at the top of the conference, which really isn't a surprise to anybody. But you've got North Dakota sitting down there in 
seventh place. You've got Minnesota Duluth in sixth place. And you've got Omaha at 21 points. Jason, what do you think about Omaha being in the top half at this point? What do you think about their chances in the NCHC race down the stretch? I think it's surprising. Obviously, if you go back and listen to the first episode of the season, you know, I was... I was buying into the, you know, this is a young team and eventually they'll, they'll falter, right? There's, there's always that question mark with young teams as, as low as the floor is with them, the ceiling is just as high, right? And this is a team that is performing well. They're getting the job done. Coach has done a great job of, of getting them to realize what needs to happen, um, you know, and, and that's the, that's going to be the recipe for them moving forward. They've put themselves in a really good position. Uh, there's, it's commonly referred to as the race for 36 in the middle. Usually, if you look at the since the NC, uh, NCHC has start, started, uh, 36 points usually puts you in that 4-5 matchup. Uh, so with UNO sitting at, at 21, you know, 36, 37 points you know, is a reasonable expectation for this team when you look at what they have coming up. And you know, we've touched on this before in past podcasts. The Achilles heel of this team, of UNO in general, has been putting forth their best effort against teams that are not the highest ranked. And you look at our schedule, and we've got St. Cloud, who's only two points ahead of us. You know, so if we can somehow manage to pick up a point against them or even stay level with them in that series. We're in a good position there if we stay within two points with them because there's one falter by them, you know, or one out of the box success for us, and we can leapfrog them. And then you look at we've got four games against Miami. That should be 12 points right there. We have to make that 12 points right there. If this team wants home ice in the conference championships, in the in the conference playoffs, it's going to start and depend on can we find a way to win those four games against Miami. Um because you've got Cairo College at home, you know, we should, in theory, at least split that. But if you can get your two wins out of there, you're now you're at 18 points right there. So there's a lot of opportunity for this team to see some success. And I just hope that, that they reach up and grab that apple that's in front. I completely agree. It's about being resilient. It's about playing smart. And like you said, four games coming up against Miami. Miami went three and one against UNO last season. It really shouldn't have happened looking at the talent that we had on that team. So uh, hopefully they don't overthink it. UNO has a really favorable schedule uh, down the stretch, uh, not having to play Denver again, being a, a big one for UNO. So uh, they have a real opportunity. And Jason, I know you and I would both love to be able to use that playoff ticket credit that we get uh, on our ticket invoice every year. We would like to be able to use that this year. And we would love uh, if the, the situation arises to be able to go watch them uh, up in St. Paul at the NCHC frozen faceoff. Cause we have not gotten to do that. And we're the only team in the NCHC that has not made uh, an appearance in the uh, conference uh, playoff finals. So that would be great. But uh, before we move on, Jason, I've, I've got to ask you who your player of the weekend is. I, I think I have an idea who you're going to pick this weekend. Who is your player of the week? There's a lot of opportunity there. So I don't think that I'm hurting you too much taking one off the board this week. Uh, but I'm going to take Pavanga off the board. I think two game winning goals, you know, what he did in the face off circle he was the rock of that line, quite honestly. I mean, on a line where most people are going to look at Weiss and say, you know, he's your best talent. I quite honestly felt like Bavanka was the best one on that line. And that was one of our most productive lines. It's hard. There's other guys out there that I really wanted to pick. So, you know, I don't think it's a knock on anyone. And we'll probably name drop a few more in here. Uh, but outside of picking Zab, because he got his one save and he's 100%. Uh, I got to I gotta go with Pavanka. See, now I thought you were going to pick Sab. I was, I was <laughs> waiting, I was waiting for that to happen. Cause that sounded like something I, you know, Jason, in the last episode, I picked the blimp 
And uh, Bridget and Jolene were about ready to kill me right then. And so that did not go particularly well, but you're right. There were a lot of really good performances this weekend. Uh, And we alluded to them uh, uh, earlier when we were talking about the series. Ray Fuss, the freshman, had two goals uh, on the weekend. Jacob Slipik had two goals this weekend. You know, I've picked both of them in the podcast, but I know you've been impressed with Ray Fust. I remember uh, last series, the uh, New Year's series, you had talked about how good he played uh, during the Friday night game. And I'm going with Ray Fust again, had two goals and he bookended the scoring on uh, Saturday night to help uh, UNO get the get the sweep. And it's really nice to see some of these young players uh, performing well. Uh, You can tell that these guys have a different personality than some of the players we've seen over the course of the last decade. And I think uh, Coach Gabinette, Coach Noel Bernier, I think they're starting to really get the players that buy into their mindset. So I'm going with the with the guy from Switzerland, Ray Fust. Uh, Great to see him having a, a success at this point in the season. And certainly Jacob Slipik was good, too. So I agree with you on Pavanka, Jason. I thought you were picking Zab. I was going to pick Pavanka. Uh, He has had a terrific season for a guy who uh, really didn't score uh, when he was with Notre Dame. uh, It's great that he transferred here and it's great that he's having success and uh, just a great weekend for the Mavs. And uh, we're excited to see uh, what's coming, uh, what's coming uh, down the road here because there's, there's a lot of potential. I'm just happy you didn't pick the wave as your player of the weekend. (laughs) Because I was going to have to end this podcast right there if you did. I, uh, you know, I, I threatened to do that since I picked the blimp last time. I thought about picking the wave because I can't remember the last time we've seen the wave. I know they did it uh, when they played downtown at the uh, CenturyLink Center. So, yes, I'm back to picking uh, regular serious hockey player picks for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, turning to our things, things you missed. missed. At Baxter, Baxter Arena. Arena. And I'll tell you what, I'm so glad that Jason came up with the things you missed at Baxter Arena because it's like they've just been coming up with all kinds of extracurricular activities for us to do during these games. We had a figure skater during intermission again on Friday night. Uh, Always fun to see uh, uh, some of the local figure skaters get on the ice. I know the fans really enjoy that. Uh, We also had an interesting intermission promotion, Jason, and I don't know if you were in the concourse during intermission and you saw this one, but... uh, uh, Bridget happened to catch uh, uh, catch this, and she recorded this. Uh, so I, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to include this. On the video board, there was a, a, a feature called Who's That Maverick? And you had kid-drawn pictures of the players. And then they let the fans kind of guess who the player was. Uh, and then they would show the picture of the player. Did you see that, Jason? I did see that. I thought that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Kind I of want to know, though. I don't remember them saying anything about this. And I'm thinking, why not tweet this out and have like a photo contest where kids submit their drawings and then you can show them at the game. So yeah. if, UNO, if anyone at UNO Marketing is listening, that's your next step is to tweet this out and have kids submit drawings and, and use those. Or sometimes at, at pro games, I see this where they'll do the, like they'll do facts about a player and then like fans have to guess who it is or something. It'd be pretty fun to have a contest in the arena or something where, you know, you put up a kid's drawing and have to guess guess which player the kid drew. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. It'd be cool if they uh, if they did open this up to some of the kids because uh, your daughter Maddie sat by us this weekend. We had our niece Scotland there Saturday night and they were both drawing during the game. So I know that they would love an opportunity to do that. And uh, it would be kind of fun to let a fan guess, kind of like college hockey Pictionary going on there, Jason. That yeah. Would be cool. yeah, it's kind of a neat deal. But the big thing that Jason and I want to talk about is the president's pregame reception on Friday night. Uh, this was the first time we got an invite. I know this was the first time you and Jolene had gotten an invite. And it was a really great event. Um, for those who don't know, UNO does not have a... Uh, banquet facility in the arena so when they do things like this they generally close off half of the practice ice they put the rubber flooring down uh they had uh, uh, sit down tables and stand up tables but they had a great spread of food jason um and this event which was hosted by yeah which was hosted by university of nebraska system president ted carter and his wife linda carter not to be confused with the uh 
the actress who played uh, Wonder Woman in the 1970s. Bridget took notes, and I'm not going to read all the notes because we'd probably spend 20 minutes on that, but they had a charcuterie table. They had a pretzel bar, which was really cool. They had roasted and breaded chicken wings, sliced chicken, Italian sausage, meatballs, two types of pasta noodles. They had a dessert table with s'mores, uh, and Jolene was kind enough to let me film her roasting marshmallows, which I kept saying to her, I'm like, just let the marshmallows catch on fire, Jolene. She didn't want to do it. Mike Gabinette comes up and says hi to us while I'm filming this. And I said, she just needs to let them catch on fire. And Gabinette's like, you just need to trust the process. <laughs> so we had that going on. There were free drinks, beer, canned soda pop. We got to hear from uh, NU President Ted Carter. Uh, UNO Chancellor Joanne Lee, uh, UNO Athletic Director Adrian Dowell. There was some big news uh, that Dowell released. I want you to know tonight, after this event, we will announce publicly a contract extension for Coach Mike Gatman for the 2020 <laughs> Jason, I want to know your thoughts on the food, on the speakers, on the vibe, and on the... Uh, the piece of news that we learned about uh, Coach Gabinette during the uh, president's pregame reception. I was impressed. Like it was, it was good food. It was, uh, you know, a great atmosphere. It's, it's kind of nice to have it there at, like, on the ice at the rink. There's, it's an atmosphere that you don't typically get. You know, it's not a smuggy ballroom. It's not, you know, some like penthouse kind of conference area or something where you just, you know, you feel like, like. I almost feel like you're part of the team and stuff to be, you know, on. The, and I know other sports have done like banquets on the field and for football stuff like that. So I think it, it was pretty cool. I think that they had it uh, on the practice ice right there. Baxter goes straight into the game. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, hearing the the dignitaries, the presidents and Adrian Dow and that talk about uh, what was going on, I think was was a nice touch. It's always nice to kind of hear from them. Um, I, I think they should do more of that, be more involved. I love that stuff. Uh, and then the news was just really good to hear that uh, Coach is going to be around for three more seasons. They extended his contract, and uh, that was kind of the, the big announcement that was coming you know, with this weekend. I love that we got wins. We, you know, we swept the weekend to, to kind of honor his, uh, his commitment to this program. And if things keep going the way they're going, you know, he may be getting offers from other schools and, and we certainly appreciate what he's given here in Omaha and, and hopefully he turns them all down and stays here long term, right? Absolutely right. Uh, yeah, contract extended through 2027, you know, and that's a really important thing for uh, recruiting young players because you look at some of the young guys that they're recruiting, they're recruiting guys for 2025 and, and 2026 now. Uh, so it's always good and it's always important to have that stability. And uh, Coach Gabinet is a great guy. Uh, it's great to see him have success this season. Uh, just a, a terrific guy, terrific family uh, here in the Omaha area. Former Maverick, you know, Mavpuck.com started while he was a, uh, while he was a player here at uh, UNO. I wonder, he probably never thought that, uh, that, uh, that this whole thing would still be going, but it is. Like you said, great event. A uh, number of civic dignitaries uh, there, politicians, etc. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, 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 NU uh, Vice President of External Affairs, uh, Heath Mello. Uh, Heath used to live in our neighborhood. Uh, I met him back in 2008 when he was running for the legislature. Uh, he always supported uh, the efforts uh, that, that Bridget and I have tried to do with our uh, neighborhood association here. Uh, just a really, really friendly, pleasant guy. He's uh, the lead advocate uh, for the uh, NU system here, uh, and he does a great job. So I thought it was wonderful. Uh, they they presented jerseys uh, to Joanne Lee and uh, to Ted Carter on the night. They were gray jerseys. His had the U.S. flag. Uh, Joanne Lee's was kind of cool because it had the flag uh, from Hong Kong, where she uh, where she was born and where she grew up. So. Uh, so just a very cool night. I, I thought it was a great honor to get to go. I thought it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with you guys. Uh, uh, Connor Willingham sat at our table. I haven't gotten to talk to him much recently. Haven't seen him as much. He has a new job within the NU system. So just a great night. 
Um, and I would just encourage people to, you know, if you haven't joined the Blue Line Club, uh, consider donating to the One Fund, uh, to the NU Foundation, uh, because uh, the academic and athletic programs of this university system are just really worth supporting. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you're watching lots of great videos. So just a lot of fun. And Jason, you and I have talked a lot about having events uh, for season ticket holders, for boosters, et cetera. So it's just great to see uh it's great to see this type of thing happens. That was our biggest, you know, things, things you missed miss. at Baxter, Baxter Arena, Arena this weekend. And uh, and uh, I'm kind of excited to see what, uh, what else they have coming up for the second half. Before you move on, I'm yes. sure you, did you already know this? I, I'm sure you caught this at the thing, but you may have already known this about where the idea for putting the home country flags on the shoulder came from. You know, I did not know this. And then five minutes before the podcast, Bridget said that former coach Mike Kemp, who is now uh, an associate athletic director in the department, came up with the idea. What'd you think of that, Jason? That's a, that was a really cool thing. I, well, and we had talked about, I think, I thought we had talked about this when they, when they first wore the gray jerseys, how I, I really appreciate that touch because I think there's a lot of people who don't understand the like the differences between, especially here in Nebraska, right? Like Nebraska football and hockey are, are, are just, it's not just a different sport. You know, there's, there's an entirely different community. And I don't think the casual fan that's just showing up to a couple games in a season or something really understands like how many of these, these guys on the ice are, are not, local products they're not even u.s products like a lot of this team is is canada and, and a lot of that just comes from gabinet's background you know but we've got swiss and you'll see you know a lot of sweden and finland and you know occasionally russian and and so i i think it was great to kind of showcase the diversity of of college hockey uh, and so to hear that that came from within, that that was Kemp's idea, I think was just like, that was awesome. Cause I really liked that idea. Uh, hopefully I said that I liked that idea when, when, when they first showed them and stuff, if I remember right. Um, so yeah, kudos to them. Cause I really think that was a, that was a nice touch. And uh, I hope they do more of those types of things in the future. Cause I, I really like that. I really, it's a little thing to do, but it makes a big difference. Yeah. And, uh, and that was probably why the team was wearing the gray jerseys on uh, Friday night, because the two jerseys they, uh, they gave uh, were the gray jerseys with the flag uh, on the shoulder. You know, I look back at this, you were not on the episode where we talked about the, the gray jerseys when they were unveiled, mm -hmm. it was Bridget and Jolene. So I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you got to got to give some input on that because you're absolutely right. If you look at our recruiting coming up for the next few years, we're getting a lot of players uh, from north of the border in Canada, and it kind of reminds me of the early years of the program. Uh, uh, certainly, Simon Lakotsi, who was in net on Saturday night, he's from Slovakia, so we've had guys uh, from all over the world, and I think it's really nice uh, to be able to honor those players. And one interesting note, and this came from uh, Brent Bean, who's OMAV's hockey fan on Twitter. Uh, and if you don't follow him, you should follow him. The Mavs are 11 and 2, Jason, when wearing the gray jerseys since they were unveiled last season. And they are 4 and 0 oh in the gray jerseys this season. So I don't know if we'll see uh, the gray jerseys on Friday night or if they'll go back to the white home jerseys on Friday with the uh, gray alternate on Saturdays, but yeah, neat story. And uh, so thank you coach camp for coming up with that idea. Cause that was a really, really cool idea. So a uh, great events, uh, a lot of fun, but speaking of UNO hockey and uh, events and uh, interesting things going on at Baxter arena, we have a home series coming up next weekend at Baxter arena again, the aforementioned Miami Red Hawks. This is an interesting team. They're in the basement of the NCHC again. They've been there for a while. They're a team with a lot of struggles, but I would say this, do not underestimate Miami coming in. You have to kind of treat this series like you're playing North Dakota, Duluth, St. Cloud, or Denver. Uh, they got swept on January 13th and 14th at DU. They lost both of those games 7 to nothing, which was uh, not the type of finish uh, 
uh, they were uh, looking for in that series. But uh, in December, they split at St. Cloud and they split at home against Niagara in the first half of the season. They also split with uh, North Dakota at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena. So uh, so do not underestimate this team coming in because they went three and one against UNO last season. And that was kind of UNO's Achilles heel was their performances against Miami and Colorado College last season. A uh, player I would encourage fans to watch is junior forward Matthew Barbellini, who has nine goals and 11 assists on the season. One other player that I would encourage you to watch, just because I think it's fascinating that a, a team called the Miami Red Hawks has a player for them, uh, a sophomore forward named Red Savage. <laughs> The, apparently, I yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what. That's uh, that's one. There, of the, there are some great names in in hockey in general. That one is is pretty up there. Like just the name Red Savage is just that's I know. that's a man. Way to go! <laughs> At some point, we'll have to do something fun, Jason. Like our our all name team in uh, college hockey because he would definitely be on that list. But what do you think about this series, Jason? I uh. I, I know what I want to have happen, um, but I wanted to get your insight and, and, and just see what you think after the last few weeks, because UNO has kind of been up and down. You know, uh, we split against St. Lawrence. Uh, we got swept out of Colorado College in December, but we swept Western Michigan at home in December. So what do you think about this Miami team coming in, Jason? They're what we expect from Miami. You know, they're they're not a they're not a great team. They're not performing at their best of their abilities. The keys, like all the stuff you just talked about, the key is is performing our best when our opponent is not, and that's something we've struggled. I'd almost feel better about this series if Miami didn't get humiliated in Denver both games because I really worry about them you know, wanting to make a statement against us being a top three team in the conference right now. So I, my prediction is I think we sweep because I really think we're a better team. And I, I like on paper, there is absolutely nothing that says that Miami should have a chance against us between the way we're playing coming into this and the rosters that we put out there, we should have this. And yet that's those X factors of us not playing our best game and getting back into that mental mistakes kinds of things that we start making a lot of times, like our games in, in uh, Cara Springs against Cara College. Like a lot of our problems out there were mental mistakes, just not prepared, not thinking, you know, not executing to the best of our abilities. You can't do that against these teams. And, and Miami's a team that they're good enough to hurt you. So hopefully. The guys, and I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and I'm banking on, the guys are going to know that this is the key to success for them. You're absolutely right, Jason. Don't don't let that performance out at, uh, out at Denver fool you. This team uh, is 4-6-0 and oh on the road that's coming in uh, to Baxter Arena. So uh, they played a lot of teams tight this season. You just never know. I mean, this is a team that split at UMass Lowell. They swept Canisius. You just never know what's going to happen. And we've seen UNO play to their opponents sometimes. So they need to be consistent. They need to be resilient. And they need to put on the gas and stay on the pedal for the entire 60 minutes both nights. I'm going to pick a sweep for this weekend because I think UNO should sweep. What do you say, Jason? I'm going to say the same. I think we win both games. Sounds great. Here's my question for you so that we make this somewhat interesting for our podcast audience. Do you think Miami scores a goal or can we get them four games with none? I mean, it would be great to see Jake Kuharski and Simon Lukosi, assuming that we are uh, sticking with that rotation this weekend. It would be great to see the two of those guys get a shutout both nights. I'm not going to expect anything in that regard. I mean, several years ago, there was a there was a game where Miami came in and what did we score like 11 goals in that game? I mean, it was a barn burner of a game. We really should be able to dominate at home, but you just never know, Jason. Uh, both games start at 7.07 p.m. It will be great, of course, to see you guys and see all the other fans out there at Baxter Arena this weekend. Should be a great series. 
The team could really use your support. UNO has had some terrific crowds this season, fourth in the nation in attendance in college hockey. So get out and support one of your good local college teams because this team is very exciting. I think there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, potentially uh, potentially fun things coming up for the team down the stretch. Uh, have a potential postseason, etc. But they need support. They need that energy. The guys feed off of that. So hopefully we'll see you out there. But until next time, go Mavs. Go Mavs.